Today, the Federal Reserve is expected to announce its largest rate hike since 1994. It will likely raise the short-term interest rate by three-quarters of a percentage point. And there could be another hike even as early as next month. On Wall Street, stock futures are up now across the board. We just checked this morning after falling again yesterday, of course, after Monday's dramatic downturn. This may have many of you stressing about your retirement and other investments. So what should you do? Daniel Gillum and Nelson Bradshaw are money management advisors with Farther. It's a local wealth management company. And join us this morning to try to help us try to take a deep breath and not panic too much. Good morning. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it. Good so, morning. Daniel, let me start with you. For those who, who maybe during the pandemic had a little bit of money, a lot of stocks were down, they bought, they saw these great sort of returns, and now they're seeing all of that gain diminish. What advice do you have for them? Because doesn't this really depend on your age as well? Uh, potentially, and and I would I would defer uh, not not just age, but your plan. Yeah. Uh, it, it, during COVID, you might have bought individual positions, and you probably bought them for a very specific purpose. So it's not age weighted; it's really goal oriented. So um, if you bought those positions during COVID and you enjoyed that ride up, if you sold during that yeah. downturn, you really missed out on a great opportunity. And I think that's great advice to think about right now, as we're seeing this. Um, so if you're look, yeah, so if you're looking at a, a long-term plan, kind of stay where you are because things just have to get better. I mean, we have to just keep thinking it's got to get better. Well, yeah, and what we say at Farther is that uh, it's not about timing the market. It's about time in market. And if you've engaged a financial advisor, you, pro you know that this volatility is going to happen. On average, we see a bear market every five and a half years. Mm. And uh, over the last 42 years, so since 1980, uh, the average intra-market declines per year is down 14%. But if you stayed invested over the last 42 years, you're up on average 9.4% per year. Okay, so, that makes me feel maybe a little bit better. If yeah. you stay. So, so then Nelson, let's say you have, um, let's say you're advising someone who's worked for a company for a long time, okay? And they're five to 10 years out from retiring and they have a nice little nest egg in their 401k. And now they're really getting very nervous because right. they see it just slowly going down. Do they, do they stay kind of where they are in your opinion? And I know this is hard because there's right. a lot of factors involved, but what, how would you advise someone like that? Right. Well, for our advisors, again, it's a long-term plan that you need to be working against. And don't try and shift. Uh, your advisory will usually work with you on some minor shifts that will take advantage of those uh, differences. But over time, uh, no, the, the market has not lost money in any 10-year period. So in generality, they might be retiring, retiring in five or so years, but they're really wanting this money to last 20 years uh, of retirement. So there's plenty of time to recoup. So uh, it's interesting because we hear all the time about the importance of diversification, right? Mm -hmm. But for those who are sort of just getting into this, maybe they just started working for their company, they're contributing to their 401k, kind of doing a little investing in the stock market. What is diversification? I mean, what do you suggest to them? I, I love that question. It's, uh, I think most people think about asset allocation or diversification mm -hmm. as being in a certain percentage of stocks, bonds, cash, et yeah. cetera. And, in reality, allocation and diversification should be based on goals. For instance, if you have a long time to, to grow assets, you might be in stocks. If you need income, you might be in bonds. Or if you have immediate needs, you might be in cash. Uh, at Farther, we try to expand that to, f for instance, very serendipitous that we're here today with uh, the Fed yeah, uh, rising, right. raising rates. And uh, we're looking at alternative asset classes that do well in inflation. Inflation mm. does not have to be bad when it comes to investing. You can take advantage of certain companies, sectors, and asset classes to help balance your portfolio over time. Yeah, there, so there could be a silver lining here, Nelson, maybe? Yeah. Daniel? Quite honestly, I mean, while they're raising rates, rates are still historically at all-time lows. Uh, so businesses and so forth, they'll have no problem in, in dealing with that. Yeah, there's a short-term impact, impacts real estate a little bit more than yeah. the other market sectors. But if you're in single-digit rates, quite honestly, businesses, if they have a good plan, they can absorb that relatively easy. Well, it feels like investors, they hear, you know, they start hearing inflation and recession and, and people get very nervous. And then we start seeing this yo-yoing, you know, when it comes to to uh, to the stock market. Then, and, and to either of you, whoever would like to right. answer this also, is is this three-quarter of an interest, uh, uh, three-quarter of a, of a percentage interest rate, which is extremely unusual, mm -hmm. right? Um, and particularly since they're looking at maybe raising them again next month. Is this going to level things out where now people can kind of maybe take a deep breath and say, okay, maybe I'm not going to see this going on with my investments. 
Do you think? Yeah, I, yeah. I, I think that, that it, it will uh, help level it out. But a lot of folks don't realize that the short-term rates and long-term rates really act very different from each other. The short-term rates are the only tool, uh, they're the main tool that the Fed has to try and slow down uh, the economy a little bit and try and slow down inflation, quite honestly. A uh, little bit of inflation actually is not bad. It's just unusual that it bumped up so quick, uh, so high in a short period of time. And when we talk about silver lining, we would be remiss if we didn't talk about all those phenomenal companies that are out there that their stock is now substantially on sale. Right. And uh, if you have a good plan and you've worked with an advisor, you're going to expect to see volatility over the life of your investment plan. Um, so expect it, take advantage of it, plan for it, and you're going to be in good shape. Daniel Nelson, thanks for your time. I hope that this helped calm some people down who are watching this morning. We appreciate both of you being here. Thank you. Thank you.